everyone, welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. I am here to talk about how to do a crew briefing for a dispatch release. And part of what I teach is aircraft dispatch where we do paper flight planning on the Boeing 737. And so this video is intended to just kind of walk through what a crew brief might hear, uh, what it'd be like if you were to deliver a crew brief to a air crew member. And I'm just going to do it based off of an example of one of the flight dispatch releases that we prepare in dispatch class. And so I've got um, a combination of a camera view and then an overhead view. So I will be putting up some documents that you can follow along. Just disclaimer, this is not a real airline flight release. The uh, All of it is done on paper. We are not allowed to use computers for flight planning presently under the 14 CFR regulations that the dispatch training is conducted under. So this release has been prepared on paper, and so it does look different than your normal airline release. Okay, so example crew brief, here we go. Good morning, Captain McLean. You are scheduled to operate a GS Flight 737 today and are is going to be leaving from Chicago O'Hare. Our estimated departure time is 1630. And it's a pretty long flight because you're going all the way to Seattle. Your estimated time en route is three hours and 55 minutes. Today, we did not need a takeoff alternate, but we did need a destination alternate. If you take a look at your weather in the flight release paperwork I've sent over in Seattle, presently the visibility is only half a mile. Um, and we also have a tempo in this TAF for around our time of arrival, that's a quarter mile and the ceiling broken at 300 feet. Therefore, under the one, two, three rule, you do require an alternate for Seattle, our destination. So for your alternates, I've actually chosen two and we'll get to a little bit more on that in a moment, but I've chosen Portland and San Jose. Uh, if you did go over to Portland, it's pretty close. You'd be there by about 2059. If you have to go all the way down to San Jose, that would take a lot longer. I plan you to depart from runway 32 left in O'Hare. And your destination runway there in Seattle is planned to be runway 16 right. The aircraft does have a couple MELs. I need to talk with you about those. So first of all, we have an armrest that is inoperative. It's, it's actually been removed. So I want to get your confirmation that that's okay for your flight today. So if with your permission, we can still dispatch the aircraft without the armrest. Uh, secondly, currently our auxiliary power unit fire detection system is inoperative. So the other MEL is number 26-8 for the 737. So that just prevents you from using your auxiliary power unit. Now, I've already gone ahead and checked and Seattle has ground power unit and a starting unit, so we won't have any problem with the aircraft going to places um, even though you don't have the APU. I have gone ahead and checked and Chicago O'Hare also has all the equipment we need for starting the aircraft even without the auxiliary power unit. So if you're okay with those MELs, we'll continue the briefing. Uh, for your takeoff weight, so I've gone ahead and used our performance numbers for the aircraft and found that uh, of your takeoff weight, your structural limiting weight, your accelerate stop runway limit weight, and the climb limit weight, uh, the lowest of these um, turns out today to be your climb limit. So the aircraft is climb limited today, leaving Chicago. Uh, no problem, should have no problem on your landing weight limits uh, because our structural weight limit for the aircraft is 114,000 pounds. And with the load of passengers that we have on board and the bags, your landing weight after you burn off your fuel between Chicago and Seattle should be landing around 106,832 pounds. So we are not having a, any kind of weight limit problem. Now, um, your aircraft today, so we did have some issues with loading the aircraft. Uh, honestly, on account of how much fuel I had to put on the aircraft for the two alternates. And I, I've been promised we'll get to that in a moment. So we had more passengers booked for this flight. We had 116 booked, unfortunately, because of how much alternate fuel 
I had to use, and I'll uh, show you your, your weight and balance envelope here just so you get a sense of that. Uh, I actually had to bump some of those people off the flight, uh, unfortunately, because of our fuel load being 30, almost 32,500 pounds because we have a lot of fuel. We are carrying enough fuel to go from Chicago, of course, to Seattle. And then our most distant alternate, which in this case today is San Jose, California, and then another 45 minutes for our domestic 45 minute reserve. So we've got plenty of fuel on board the aircraft today. Um, and just to show you our center of gravity, we also had a problem because we have so much fuel and the passengers, we actually were somewhat limited by our forward center of gravity. Uh, this is using our assumed weight calculations where we just calculated all the numbers with the decimals so that we can load our aircraft within the center of gravity. And this is the method that we use for planning in, in my class for the Boeing 737. But again, these are not real numbers, so please don't just try to go ahead and use these. This is not for real aircraft planning. Um, so going on with that, so we, we do have plenty of fuel. We've got 4,100 pounds in the forward cargo bin, 1,000 in the aft. Um, it can be reloaded a little bit, maybe move your center of gravity a little farther aft. But like I said, uh, honestly, I actually even added a little more fuel on what I had initially planned because of a headwind that I expect you're going to encounter. So here is uh, just to show you your flight uh, log paperwork. Um, we have got the whole route planned out here. You're going to be using the O'Hare departure. It's a vector SID and it's going to take you on your way. And then we're going to be intercepting J89 to J101. And then at DLL, changing over to J34. We're going to take J34 all the way down to uh, Billings, Montana, where you're going to get on the at the Billings BOR, moving over to J136. And that takes you in on the Glazer 9 arrival into Seattle. But like I mentioned, um, this is planned at Mach 0.74. Uh, we have a significant headwind going along. You'll notice your ground speed is a lot slower than your true airspeed at various points here during your flight plan. So that means we're going to need some extra fuel. So on account of the headwind, I actually had to give you even more fuel. So our, your planned fuel load is actually... 34,091 pounds, but that also includes 500 pounds for taxi fuel, which is our standard amount, as you'll recall. So you're going to be taking off with about 33,591 pounds. Because of all that fuel, your most distant alternate plus the 45 minute reserve, you're going to be landing with about 12,000 pounds of fuel on board. So we got plenty of fuel in case the weather uh, in Seattle isn't great. So we're going to talk about that in a moment. Like I mentioned, your route here is your whole route that I've planned out for you. We're doing that vector SID to the Badger VOR. You're planned at flight level 320 today. So let's do a quick weather briefing also. And let me pull up the actual weather in O'Hare for you to see. So the weather here in O'Hare is, is pretty good, really. It's only a mile visibility, but not a factor for us. It's light rain. We have some mist going on. Currently, ceiling is reported at 500 feet. Temperature and dew point are, are somewhat close uh, together right now. This uh, rain shower is in the area. Aside from the fact that the wind might be kind of gusty, um, I'm not really too concerned about it. We do have your visibility required to take off. So there's no, there's no problem with that. You also have the visibility to come back to Chicago and land should you require a immediate return to O'Hare. Just keep in mind, if that were to happen, we would be well over the max landing weight structurally. And we would, if it was an emergency, you could clearly return, but we would have an overweight landing inspection to do, which is, we can do that. Um, some other uh, things then going into Seattle, uh, we do have a few notams for Chicago. We have a runway closure, but it's happening at night. We've got another runway that's closed, but still plenty of runways available for your departure there. Uh, like I mentioned, in Seattle, we do have a concern with some really low visibility and some low ceilings. This is a, a tempo here. 
that does affect your arrival time. For that reason, that's uh, the main driver that I've given you two alternates. So uh, with the two alternates, I've used exemption 3585. And with exemption 3585, I needed that because of this tempo where the visibility was only a quarter mile. Uh, and really the visibility needed for you to land in Seattle is a half. But since that tempo allows me, I can use the tempo with that quarter mile provided I add you two alternates. So uh, that poor visibility in Seattle may be a factor for your arrival. We do have a lot of fuel. So you can hold if you would like at Seattle for quite a while before you'd need to go over to an alternate. Now, because we are releasing under exemption 3585, I will definitely provide you a update in route so that you can uh, see where it would be best to go to because I've loaded enough fuel to go to your farthest alternate, San Jose, and then 45 minutes after that. I have not loaded enough fuel to go from Seattle to Portland to San Jose and then another 45 minutes. We have enough for the most distant alternate plus your reserve. So um, let's take a look at your alternate weather. In Portland here, uh, we have currently one and a half miles in mist. Overcast 400 temp and dew point are the same. Uh, this TAF for Portland isn't too bad. We've got one and three quarter mile in fog at your arrival time. Uh, again, a tempo in there for two miles. Oh, excuse me. The arrival time would be uh, a little bit later, actually. It'd be around 20 so by 20 Zulu, we're actually expecting it to improve significantly, up to five miles missed and scattered at 800, which is not even a ceiling. So, but um, when I went ahead and derived my alternate minimums for your flight uh, in Portland, I used OPSPEC C55. I used the two nav aid rule. There's a couple ILSs there at Portland. I have ended up using these two ILSs, used the two nav aid rule, and I got a 500 foot ceiling and one statute mile visibility. Now you may notice then at Portland, we have a broken layer or sorry, an overcast layer at 400 currently, which does present a problem, except for again, if I use exemption 3585, we can cut your ceiling and visibility in half. So we can be down as low as a 300 foot ceiling and a half mile visibility for your Portland alternate requirements because of that second alternate that I've put on with exemption 3585. So that's San Jose. And um, the San Jose alternate minimums, we need 600 foot and a mile and a half. That was using the one nav aid rule on the ILS there at San Jose. Thankfully, the weather at San Jose is excellent. So if you were to need to go there, it's really great. I mean, it's just, it's VFR. So it's broken ceiling at 20,000 feet. Uh, temp is 14, dew point six. So we've got uh, not too bad of winds. The winds are lined up really well for you to do that uh, approach into three zero left if you were somehow to need to do an approach, um, but more likely they just give you a visual approach if you did go to San Jose. So all that is to say, I have released this flight under exemption 3585. Um, and that was with those two alternates we did have to bump some passengers to put enough fuel on to go all the way down to San Jose. Unfortunately, we did not have any closer alternates available in our airline's ops specs C70. So I have gone ahead and released it under 3585. Like I said, I will give you an en route update, of course, um, partway through the flight and let you know what's going on with that weather at Seattle with that low visibility. Hopefully it doesn't affect your arrival. However, you do have plenty of fuel, so we could hold for a significant period of time. And Portland most likely would still work as an alternate. I'm hoping that that ceiling just goes up just slightly, um, but under 3585, it's okay. And then just finally, I have done your load manifest here. So I've planned you, um, again, 34,000, over 34,000 takeoff fuel. If you, or departure fuel, uh, your um, max allowable weight for the flight is 127,340. We did have to bump some passengers, like I mentioned. If, uh, if we delayed the flight slightly by like about an hour and a half, it, you have the potential to take all the people that wanted to go. However, 
if we want this flight to go on time, it would have to be released under exemption 3585 with that extra fuel, choosing another extra alternate, um, which is again, the decision's basically up to you, but I concur with either option, releasing right now under 3585 or delay the flight an hour and a half and we could take all the people because we could remove that second alternate of San Jose. We should be able to use Portland with a later arrival time that would be fine and we would not need exemption 3585. So have an excellent flight. Um, if there's anything I can do for you, please don't hesitate to reach out during your flight. I would be very happy to provide you weather update as I will already, as I already discussed. Have a great flight. And that's just an example of a crew brief. So hope you enjoyed that. Um, there's plenty of other things I referenced in this video that I did not explain in the crew brief. And so if you'd like to check out my other playlist, especially the one that's prepped for the aircraft dispatcher oral and practical exam, because some of the things I referred to, uh, op specs and derived alternate minimums and takeoff alternates of exemption 3585, I have videos covering all of those rather technical topics, which you might enjoy checking out later. Have a great one and don't forget to like and subscribe.